Every week, I have the absolute pleasure of sitting here and introducing stories of brothers and sisters who excel in their areas of expertise. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Anur the Light. Shaista Kathri Jassat has made a name for herself as an entrepreneur and we wanted to know more. As a fashionista, foodie, fit mom, entrepreneur, wife, events planner, interior decorator and blogger, Shaista Kathri Jassat's creative side is finding its outlet in many ways. I am a party planner. Um, I do, I style bespoke uh, events, parties. I also run an online kids interior decor store. I make smoothie bowls and I train. Um, I started my business almost six years ago when my son turned, just before he turned a year. Um, I previously came from an office job before I had kids, but once my son was bo born, I knew that I needed to be at home. But I also knew I couldn't be just that. I couldn't just be at home and, and be a stay-at-home mom with him and obviously a wife to my husband. Um, and that's where it started. I planned parties for friends, parties for families, and I realized that it's something I really enjoy and I could possibly make a bit of a living out of it. Shaista's knack for design led her to establish an online decor shop and this started with ideas for her children's bedrooms. When we moved into our home, um, I realised that my other passion and the other way my creativity came about was um, in designing my home and just designing beautiful spaces, be it my desk area, be it the kids' rooms. That was something I enjoyed. And that's where my Two Peas and a Peanut company came about. Uh, the Two Peas are my kids, Yusuf and Yara, and Peanut is our German Shepherd. Um, so I started an online store selling kids' interior decor, uh, plushies, um, wall hangings, all sort of cute, um, quirky things uh, that, that new mums would like for their homes and kids also would enjoy. Design ideas soon spread and Traista's decor extended to party planning and corporate events where the cutest party on the block and the block corporate events was born. Um, initially, I started my business from, from um, planning parties for friends, family, and then I started off like that, and six years later, it's really taken off. Um, I just recently opened a corporate division uh, of my business. My business is called The Cutest Party on the Block, and the corporate division is called The Block Corporate Events. It, I have twin boys, and it was their second birthday party and I had chosen a nursery rhyme theme for them, which was proving very difficult because I couldn't find nursery rhyme things anywhere. I phoned her and we spoke about it. And um, it was the best decision that I made because she did from the decor to all the food items, everything. And I couldn't have done it better myself. My kids loved it. Everybody that I had invited was really, really impressed. Um, she is wildly creative. And every party that she does, if you've seen pics of her stuff, it just keeps getting better and better and better. As an entrepreneur, Shaista places a great deal of emphasis on looking the part. She also uses fashion as a means for experimenting with her creativity. My creative side, which is quite a, well, most of me, a very large part of me, um, definitely um, has a major influence on my personal style and my hijab dressing. Um, sometimes I wonder where do I find the time to, to, to still look, look pretty and fashionable um, with two kids and running all my businesses. But um, I think it just stems from everything creative I do, be it the businesses, be it my style, it be it the home, it's just something I love. And if that wasn't enough, Shaista's focus on health and fitness allows her to experiment with some creative meal ideas that she shares with her followers. I always ate healthy and I always enjoyed what I ate because I always made it interesting. Um, and when I started my personal Instagram profile, I started posting 
the meals I made, uh, be it meals or smoothie bowls or laid out pretty. And um, it just took off from there. People became interested and a lot of ladies became inspired by it. Um, and that's basically where it started. Juggling this kind of lifestyle, being a, a wife, a mom, um, trying to eat healthy, look good, stay fit, um, it definitely is difficult. It's not something where you know you just post pictures on Instagram and it's as easy as that. It's hard work. It's years and years of, of, of struggle and just hustling and getting through it that eventually leads to, to your success. Shaista's ambitions knows no limits and this mompreneur truly is going places. It simply takes an idea and a bit of creative flair to become a success doing what makes you happy. Street style has come a long way since we first started and we featured some of the most stylish brothers and sisters. Let's go to Hauteng for this week's Stylista. One should always take one's outfit into consideration first because for me I would always like to complete and complement my scarf style with my outfit. So I look at the colors and I look at the textures of my outfit and then I try to incorporate that into my scarf style. The other tip that I would highly recommend is that people should actually pin their scarf styles into place so that it remains intact throughout the day. It alleviates the problem of the scarf slipping off and it's just neat and intact throughout the day. How I started my scarf styling business, it actually started as a hobby. I enjoyed doing scarf styling and then I started experimenting with different styles. Uh, people started commenting on my styles and complimenting me and then eventually that led to many of them asking me to do their styling for them, for their matric balls, when they were going to events and functions and that's how it eventually evolved into a business. My scarf styling represents my personality, it's who I am. Uh, I think I have a colorful personality and I think it shows in my scarf styling. Um, I also like to dress trendy and project a professional image, especially when I'm at school. And I do take the time, you know, to drape my scarf, to make sure that my scarf colors coordinate with my outfits. Like today I'm wearing a feather with my scarf style and some people might think that it is a bit outlandish, but if one wears it confidently, I think it really looks good. And you, if you carry it off well, then it really looks good. I feel that ladies are becoming more creative and innovative with their scarf styles. They are tired of wearing the same scarf styles all the time. And one of the latest trends that I would say is really taking the world by storm would be the turban style. How I actually started writing my book was due to the fact that I started giving scarf styling workshops. Many ladies requested that I teach them how to do their scarf styling. And you know, as a scarf stylist, I must say over the past 10 years, I've had the privilege of meeting the most extraordinary people and listening to their stories, listening to their challenges with regards to scarf styling. And what I've done in the book is I've tried to address those challenges and I've also tried to pass on my knowledge and expertise as a scarf stylist. And I've basically uh, compiled a comprehensive scarf styling image consulting guide. I think that scarf styling is here to stay. I think that in the future there will be so many more scarf stylists that will be emerging, each coming with their own ideas and their own styles. And I see scarf styling going to fashion shows. So many people are starting to wear scarves these days. Youngsters are wearing scarves. And as a result, they are looking for trendy styles. They are looking for creative ways to drape their scarves. And if there are people out there who are able to do this and to showcase it, then I do think that there's a market for it and I really see uh, it going a long way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the history of the Ummah is sometimes well documented and other times not. A group in Johannesburg saw the need for remembering the Muslim community there. Check out their story. The Johannesburg Muslim community can trace their existence to just over the discovery of gold as people from all corners of the globe descended here seeking their fortune. Attempts have been made in the past to document some of this history, but it often fell by the wayside. That is, until the Organization for Human Thought and Process came about. Our objective is quite simple. We want to collect information and disseminate information. So we want OTAP to be the vehicle that our youth, our current adults, our old people as well, can use OTAP to disseminate information to each other. So, because like I said we previously, we've had a very oral type of history and an oral type of way of getting our, our, our history across. We want to solidify it, record it, and make it real for generations to come. With the advent of social media, people are able to connect through these platforms and share their stories as well as memories. OTAP saw this as an opportunity to reconnect and encourage others to do the same. I think the importance of it is that our history is getting lost because it's an oral history mostly. We've got a generation that is uh, they digital, they, they, they absorb information quite quickly as well, and there's a lot of information and we feel like we're getting whitewashed in that vast information that they have access to. So the importance of OTAP is to make sure that we do remain as a people for our people most importantly as well. So that they do understand that the, 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 the names that they hear, the stories that they hear are real people that had an influence of how we do things today. As part of their commitment to document the stories of the community, members often visit older people to record their version of history. This year in Bosman, they try to retain everything that was done with our children and with myself in Fitas and Albertsville and all the other surrounding areas to retain. And they've done that in Bosman because we have a madrasa that is functioning well. We have a mosque frequented at all times. We have religious functions at the mosque at all times. And the Muslim community in Bosman is still as great as what it was at that time, with all of them still trying to retain and encourage the practices, not only of the other cars, but all the religious activities, and to retain and uphold as much as what we possibly can, what is required of all Muslims at all times. In its quest to rekindle relations as well as collect histories of the Johannesburg Muslim community, the group has moved from the online space to organizing events where they could interact. OTAP is not a religious organization, so the photos are widespread. We've got photos of 1903 of a family going on a picnic and where they went on a picnic and who was at this picnic. We've got banners of Mawlud Chamads from Cape Town, from PE, from uh, Kimberley who all have traveled at some point to contribute and keep alive our legacies that we're using till today. We want it to be as broad as possible. So we've got, we've got sporting legends that need to be acknowledged. We've got academic legends that need to be acknowledged, as well as every, the lady who made the Kusistas on, on the corner. She played an important role in your life as well and needs to be acknowledged as well. So if we say, ons kom van bekwame mense, it means we come from competent people. But for us, Bakwa means respected. It means the ones that know. Something that our generation should acknowledge. We come from a generation that knows everything. You go on to Google and you'll find the answer. But if you look through our history, while people are the people who built uh, hospitals, the door at Groote Skier, they're the architects, they, the, they, they, they were the engineers, they have achieved great feats that we don't acknowledge. And I think we need to start acknowledging that we come from competent, respected people. Ons kom van bekwame mense. Be proud of it. The Bosmont Mosque has for years been the epicenter of the Muslim community and prayer gatherings, like the Ratibul Haddad, serving to nourish mind, body and soul. OTAP sees this as an important aspect that needs to be kept alive and are planning a number of events following this formula. We have a, molet, uh, a mass molet here once a year and it's well attended. But the history of that molet 
and the acknowledgement of who gave it to us and how we keep it alive needs to be maintained. events that is known to our community as well. So we have Ratibul Khadats, we have the Kabar cleanup, we have big walks and that type of stuff. But besides the event, which gets the people to the event, a fun family full day, we use the events to disseminate some of the information. So we've got artifacts that have been donated by a lot of people from around the country, where we've got kitabs that are handwritten. We've got Qur'ans that have been in families for generations. Um, today we've got a trowel which laid the foundation for a few masjids since the early 1900s. So besides them coming along, having a meal, having a fun day with a, a, a family as well, there's a little bit of history, which I think will boost the pride in the history as well. History is important as a tool for identity. It helps document the role of the people, their faith, culture and customs for future generations. For OTAP, the work they do is adding to the memory and the future of the Johannesburg Muslim community. As the season changes, so too do our social calendars. Spring is in the air and suddenly our events calendar has a lot more going on. In keeping with the spirit of Heritage Day, a National Open Mosque Day is being held with participating mosques in Durban, Johannesburg and Cape Town. The day encourages South Africans to celebrate their diverse nation and visit a mosque for a two-hour program. It welcomes people of all faiths to meet and greet, a tour of the mosque, explanations of what is done at mosques and open discussions about Islam. Let's break down barriers and encourage all family and friends to participate in the celebration of our nation. For further information on the campaign, contact the SAMNET. Details are on screen. The Imam Abdullah Haran Education Trust, in association with Bibi's Kitchen, will be hosting a 6km fun walk on the 13th of September at 8am. The walk is in aid of creating awareness of the Imam Abdullah Haran Education Trust and Imam Abdullah Haran. Gather your family and your walking shoes to join in this fun walk with the community and show your support. Women with Purpose will be hosting the second part in a series of events focusing on strengthening our pillars of worship. Speakers such as Mu'alima Radia Bawa, Anifa Ali and Mu'alima Rushan Misbach, among others from the entrepreneurship, religious, wellness and activism backgrounds will share their stories. A warm breakfast and goodie bag will be provided and the event is open to ladies only. Don't miss the chance to celebrate being a Muslim woman and spend the morning with like-minded individuals. The University of KwaZulu-Natal's Creative Arts is hosting the 22nd Poetry Africa International Festival this October from the 16th to the 20th. With Durban as a platform to celebrate poetry and the art of words, the festival provides an intercultural exchange through various poetry performances, discussions and events. Local and international artists and poets will come together again to celebrate their craft, raise awareness and entertain the public through their art form. The annual Avon Justine Itemba Walkathon for Breast Cancer Awareness enjoys its 13th walk and needs your support. If you have known anyone affected by breast cancer, you can understand this worthy cause. Buy your tickets today and enjoy a fun-filled walkathon to show the world that you care. <laughs> Please do not forget to let us know early enough what's happening in your neck of the woods so that we can announce it here. Off to Cape Town we go for this week's travel feature. Majestic Cape Town, South Africa's founding city and a tavern of the seas for the weary traveller. In the heart of the city is the company's gardens, established by the Dutch to supply passing ships with fresh fruit and vegetables. It is a much needed green lung that has served the city well for almost 400 years. A walk through the gardens reveals much about its history as well as the different species of plants and trees. Some of these can be traced right back to Jan van Riebeek, the first governor of the Cape. 
the gardens are filled with interesting statues, artifacts and places of interest. Each one has its own story to tell and time often gets lost in this peaceful sanctuary. One can easily spend a day exploring the company's gardens with so much to see and do. Halal eating places are often a dime a dozen in beautiful Cape Town, but the measure of a great place has to be in its patronage and food. From its menu to its decor, this is one place not to be missed. The Butcher's Wife is a concept we started over a year and a half ago. Um, it is our own brand and it is a spin-off from our meat tray. We've got a butchery out in Grassy Park, we've got two branches there. And because we are knowledgeable about meat and the different meat cuts, we wanted to translate that onto the plate. A lot of experience comes from the meat trade. I've been in the trade for 30 years. We say that, you know, we must treat the steak with respect. So uh, we take our steaks between medium, medium well. There's a maximum we take it. Must be a little bit pink inside. Uh, the steaks are thick cut. So we offer something different to uh, what the rest of the steakhouses offer. Quality over quantity is, 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 our, is our concept. Here's a restaurant that is serious about making food right. We do pizzas, we do pastas, uh, we do burgers, uh, obviously the steaks and our grills. Everything is prepared in-house. Um, we try and buy in as little of a prepared product as possible. Uh, where we can manufacture, we do. In fact, our, uh, another item we have on our menu is our baguettes, and that we make on the premises as well. And I want when that plate of food gets placed on the table in front of them, I want them to enjoy what they are looking at and that gives me pleasure. Apart from the main courses, there is a wickedly decadent dessert menu that has to be tasted to be appreciated. I feel number one because we uh, have this concept in Belgravia Road on the doorstep of many of our clients um, and they can get a quality product and they, they can sit in a lovely ambience. I feel that is what we wanted to give them. I feel it's important for people to come in and they don't have to drive out far. We, we are right on the doorstep and they can enjoy the best right here. It is one of the V&A waterfront's oldest attractions and a place that has remained a firm favourite with many visitors. Scratch Patch is um, gemstones and minerals. We get it in its raw form and then we polish it ourselves so the little kiddies like, can purchase a bag or cup and then they can go into the scratch patch and then they can fill it up with the different gemstones from outside. Young and old often spend hours sifting through the many gemstones that can be found all over the place. To come to the scratch patch people, um, they enjoy scratching in the patch and sitting here for hours. It's very interesting for kids to learn about the stones. There's also the cave golf putt but that's a, a family activity. Apart from the gemstones, there's also the highly popular cave golf. It is based on the game of putt putt and has many an aspiring golfer giving it their best shot. The scratch patch is a great place to keep visitors entertained and continues to draw people over and over. All our past episodes can be found on YouTube and this comes in handy for recipes and travel ideas. Please tell your friends and family so that we can grow our online presence. I'm done for the day, but I look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place. Assalamu alaikum from me, Sahra Robinson. Mm -hmm.